Okay, so I had a question from my Instagram um, about doing very quick colors in Clip Studio Paint. And um, hopefully this video can kind of help you guys. I know this is not going to be probably a terribly professionally made video. <laughs> uh, but I'm just going to kind of wing it and help you guys on my iPad. Okay, so this is currently a commission that I'm working on um, for a really good friend. And here we have the line work done. We have the line work set to a layer all by itself. Um, as you can see, I got a few parts left over on different layers. But for the most part, we're just on this line layer and we have a white background on a separate layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here in our palette. And you see the top layer is going to be our lines right and the second layer says layer 12 here i just made a new layer this is going to be where i'm going to put my colors in my flats so there's several ways to do this in clip studio paint and it's fucking amazing um what this program can do so let's go ahead and lock this top layer that way we don't just uh fuck around with it now I like to keep my flat layers below my line layer. That way the colors go back behind the black. Um, I also like to put it to multiply. You don't have to do this, but this is just kind of the way that I work. So one way that we're going to do this is um, we're going to take the paint bucket tool. And you can see it right here. I also have, I also have it set up to where at the top here... Um, because I'm working on my iPad. Uh, I only have so much screen space. So you can see my toolbar I have moved up. The easy way to do that is you just take it from this sidebar here. And then you can just drag it, right? So now I'm dragging it. And then I can put it anywhere up here. This helps save so much room if you're working on iPad Pro. And I highly recommend taking the time to do that. Um, and it'll clear out a lot of space. I'm only working on 9.7 inch. So here's what we're going to do with the uh, the paint bucket tool. We click the icon. Now, this is going to be your sub-tool field option. Um, I have refer other layers on right now. So what that's going to do is that's going to refer the layers below. Or it's going to refer all these other layers. So we're below the line art right now and we want to refer to the line art. So as we click in the lines, we're now filling in all the spaces that we need, right? And this is super, super fast and super, super simple. And the reason I like to have it below the line work here is just so it kind of keeps a lot of that like these black areas will stay on top. So that's one way, that's one way we can fill in flats super, super quick, right? Okay, now let's clear that. A second way we can do flats super quick, and this is the, uh, this is the way that I used to do it all the time. I don't as much anymore. Um, let's use a little bit more of a realistic color so you guys kind of get an idea and I'm just not, that I'm just not just throwing shit down randomly. So we have close and fill now. It was refer other layers was our first one, right? So that was referring to all the other layers and that was filling in like a paint bucket tool. Now we go to close and fill. What close and fill is going to do is it's going to give you a lasso tool. And this lasso, let's say we want to do the hand. The important thing is with this lasso tool, we're going all the way around the object we want to fill. So you notice we're cutting into the sleeve there. It's not going to fill that sleeve, except for one little tiny part here. You're going to see in a minute. Um, it filled this part in because it's going to fill in everything that we circle around, right? So you notice we cut through this part and it didn't fill it. That's because we to fill these squares in, we would have to go all the way through them, right? But this is one thing you're going to learn with um, 
the close and fill tool, it's really, really, really nice for these big areas too. So like if I went into the uh, paint bucket tool and I did refer other layers, right? And I'm doing hair, I kind of have to go through all these. But if I'm gonna do a close and fill, then I just kind of have to make sure that I get all the hair in here. Right, and none of the other areas that I want. So you notice it just takes that big chunk in there. Um, and then these small areas, you're just gonna have to kind of watch out for and kind of clean up later. This is also kind of why I use the, uh, the refer other layers paint bucket tool. Just kind of allows me to prevent that. But um, both these are super handy. I, I recommend using both of them. Okay, so the third, the third way that I do quick flats. Um, you notice I kind of click the, uh, the icon up here. You'll see that, that black spot. It's a lasso tool. But over here in our toolbar, We go to over here, um, and it's going to be the lasso fill tool. This is in with your straight line tool, your curve, your polyline, all these things. I think on my desktop, it's actually in the rulers section, but um, on iPad, I think it's by itself, or I might have moved it early on, and I just don't fucking remember. <laughs> all right, so this is actually a tool that I love to play around with as far as making... Um, just random shapes. It's not so much that I use it for doing flats because I think it takes a little bit more work than it's worth for doing flats. Um, but it's still a great tool. And you'll kind of see what it does in a second here. So if I was doing flats, you can see last the close and fill would be way easier, way easier, right? But what I can do with this is Let's say, let's say I do a close and fill and I have some splotchy lines, which sometimes you'll get this in CSP. Um, what I want to do is now I can close within that and I'm going to fill all of that, right? Now it just looks like she ate mud or hopefully that's just mud. <laughs> hopefully that's nothing else but mud. So one thing I really, really, really love doing with this is my background shapes. Um, especially in comics, let's say I want to do a tree, right? And I can kind of do these fairly easily. And it's really fucking fun to play with. Um, now I'm just kind of making shapes, right? And I'm filling spots in. This is a really, really fun tool to play with. I can even go to my transparency and kind of cut into it. And I do this a lot when I'm doing foliage. Um, you'll see in a second here, I'll pull up my somewhat finished commission and you can see how I used it in the background so what I did was I just made these types of shapes right and what I was doing was just kind of going with these effects and just kind of fucking around. Then I would come in here with the uh, the pin tool and just kind of clean up my edges a little bit and kind of give it the more shape that I wanted. But what this allows you to do is kind of just make shapes without thinking too much. Like I said, it's just it's just a, an amazing tool. I love this program so much. It saves me so much time. It allows you to do your flats so easily. Um, as long as I think the biggest hurdle I have is knowing where to put my lights and shadows as far as like fundamentals go. But once you learn that, I mean, this is, it's just so easy to do. And then you can come in here with your, uh, with your flats filled out or even your shadow layer. Like what I like to do with my shadow layer is I'll go a layer below it and set that to multiply. And then usually I'll, uh, I can adjust those too. So let's take off that, that green so you guys can see a little bit better. But you see, these are my shadows and those are the shadow tones and set to multiply over the top. It kind of gives it a little bit of that, that darker look, right? Um, I also have a glow dodge on it and you can kind of see when I take that off, 
the one thing I didn't really like is that it kind of metered it a little bit. But there's a there's our glow dodge um, put back onto it, and that's always the last step that I will take. So these are just some tools that you can use with CSP to kind of get your colors in quickly. You get your shadows in quickly if you're doing cell shading. You can even paint on top of this by using the mask here. You see this little red line on my, my glow dodge here. Um, that means I'm clipped to the layer below. So I can't draw anywhere on this unless I take that, that off, right? Now it shows up. But if I do that, we're clipped to the layer below so everything stays clean. Um, except for this part that I, I got on her stomach. So, And you can see that's all my glow dodge, right? So that's clipped to the layer below. And it's just going to stay on those colors. So those are just some tips, some tools. I hope you guys can use them. Um, get some use out of this program because it's really fantastic. Uh, it saves me so much time by learning this stuff. And I hope this can be uh, a little bit useful to you guys. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Peace.